words. They're just words. In the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte uses words to deter journalists from writing the truth. Words. In Turkey, journalist Ahmet Altan is serving life in prison for speaking about history. Iranian lawyer Nasrin Sotadeh was imprisoned for defending protesters. And Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi was tortured and murdered for writing about repression in the Middle East. His fingers were severed, one by one. Words. Ukrainian filmmaker Oleg Sensov criticized the Russian government. Egyptian poet Galal al Beheri wrote a song and a book. Uyghur professor Ilham Toti launched a website. They remain in prison. More than 250 journalists around the world were in jail in 2018. Words. Vladimir Putin uses them to rewrite history. Laws in Russia restrict free expression. Dissenters are labeled foreign agents whose actions are justifying terrorism. Criticism of the state is called fake news. And it's not just over there. The President of the United States demands books he doesn't like be pulled from publication, withdraws press credentials, and uses words to describe journalists like the enemy of the American people. 29% of Americans believe him. This has consequences. We need to stand up to authoritarians, not take them at their word or justify their brutality or borrow from their playbook. Because these are words and warnings, and now they're threats. Journalists are targeted at political rallies. Reporters are manhandled. Bombs are sent to news organizations. And gunmen walk through the front door. We didn't think this could happen here. But it is. When words are not protected, what stories go untold? What goes unreported? What goes unknown? Words are the lifeblood of our freedom. Words are truth. They bring us together. They help us ask questions and understand each other. Words are connection and ideas and research and songs, and inspiration, and laughter, and fun, and love. And for nearly a hundred years, PEN America has been fighting for words. We fight for them in Saudi Arabia, in China, in Russia, Myanmar, Turkey, Mexico, in New York, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., and in Denver, Atlanta, Dallas, Cincinnati, New Orleans, and anywhere else across America and around the world where words need protection. We need to be strong for words because they are truly in danger. And to be strong, we must come together. We are louder together.